Welcome back to Equity Mates Investing, a podcast that explores what's possible in the world of investing. If you've just joined us for the first time, a huge welcome. My name is Bryce, and today we're looking at our latest tattoo slogan, Companies Die, Indexes Last Forever. We have a community question on ETF overlap, and we have Adam Dawes back with another Pimp My Portfolio. To chat through it, as always, is my equity buddy, Ren. How are you? I'm very good, Bryce. Excited for this episode. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still laughing about the fact we're going to get tattoos of companies die indexes <laughs> last forever. Uh, are we going to get tattoos? No, no. Was, if we sold equity mates. If we sold equity mates. If we list, I'll get companies die indexes last forever tattoo. Which is ironic because that's not what you want to be telling your investors <laughs> once you list. <laughs> true, true, true. But speaking of listing, I wanted to just quickly jump in at the top of the show to get your thoughts on this news item that the Financial Times has been reporting. Okay. Uh, the New York Stock Exchange have been polling market participants on a big change they're considering making. Oh, I think I've seen this. Oh, okay. 24-7 trading. 24-7 trading. Yeah, yeah. What did you think? Awful idea. Awful? Yeah, awful idea. Good I for the exchange. They'll make a heap more money. Great for the exchange. But can you just imagine the... A, change in mental stress that it'll cause a lot of people... B, just the general working environment in industry. You'll have people literally working around the clock. Yeah. Like yeah. The, the banks, the high frequency traders. You already have people working around the clock trying to play the market in Australia and then play the yeah. market overseas. Yeah, Japan's opening soon. Ja like, like, yeah. It would be awful. Um, just keep it as is. There's no need. I reckon no need. make and it I less. One day a week. Sure. <laughs> like, seriously. Just... It, market can digest the news and then every Wednesday open the market everyone can buy Quick or flash sell up of price. price discovery and then everyone has to own their shares for at least a week <laughs> <laughs> you can still yeah yeah I think it's an awful idea um, I don't think it'll get up I don't know why I say that but I mean look like, the, it'll be such an industry change the financial the bankers will have to the bankers won't be able to go on their long lunches when market closes as oh well. I mean imagine being even like working for a company like being a company CEO and every morning having to wake up and see what your stock price has done overnight even, and yeah. then respond to it yeah worst start to the day worst start well I mean it happens with aftermarket trading for some of yeah, and but futures like, and all that stuff. But yeah. but yeah, just awful, awful, awful idea. And I think it's being driven by the fact that crypto markets are open 24-7. Yeah, crypto, uh, treasuries, uh, futures, and also apparently Stevie Cohen, who's a big investor, has some startup trying to drive it. So. Property markets open 24-7 as well. True, no true. No one talks about that. <laughs> yeah, maybe that should be the, the exchange. You can, ke you can open the stock market 24-7 but there has to be massive settlement costs for each trade. Yeah, and no prices. You just <laughs> <laughs> you have to knock on the door. You have to have real estate <laughs> yeah, agents you taking you agent. around. Yeah. <laughs> All right, anyway, that's um, a piece of news. Uh, we hate it. And if the New York Stock Exchange listens to us, don't do it. If the ASX listens to us, don't even think about doing it. They are so far from that. But there's a lot of money that would be made if they do it. So, so much. Wouldn't surprise me if they do it. But look, Bryce, we wanted to also use the start of the show to talk about this slogan that uh, we included in our latest book, mm -hmm. uh, Don't Stress, Just Invest. But that's not the slogan. The slogan is companies die, indexes are forever. Yeah, I think I said indexes last forever, but it's essentially the same thing. So what do we mean by this, Ren, and why do we have it at the top of the show? <clears throat> I think we it's important that we remind ourselves of the value of long-term investing but also importantly a lot of new people have come to the show this year and uh, are tossing up around should I be buying individual companies should I be buying indexes and this is just a great reminder companies die indexes are forever and what do we mean by this when you're investing in individual companies you can lose everything companies S die companies die Jeffrey West in his book scale calculated that since 1950 28,853 companies have traded on the US stock market and that 22,469 of those companies had gone bankrupt by 2009. That is 78% of companies that have listed on the stock market have gone bankrupt. Not great odds. Not great odds at all. <laughs> Why would we be investing? 
Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that scares me. Of someone coming to the market, I read that 78%. How am I supposed to get this right? Yeah. Well, the thing is that despite that 78% of companies that listed on the US stock market between 1950 and 2009 going bankrupt, in that time, the US stock market has grown 23,249%. Mm. Or put another way, each $100 invested with dividends reinvested has turned into more than $200,000. Wow. Yeah. So, so then how do you square that? The idea that three quarters of companies have gone bankrupt, yep. but you've turned $100 into 200 grand in that time. And that is the power of indexes. That is the power of the index. The top whatever percent remaining 20% driving huge market returns. Well, it's it's not even and as rotating simple. Through. It's, yeah, it's not even as simple as that. It's like a lot of the companies that have gone bankrupt have driven the index for some time. And as they drove the index, they became bigger parts of the mm, index mm. because the stock market index, the ASX 200 or the S&P 500, whatever it is, gets rebalanced every quarter. And as companies grow, they take up a bigger part of the index and when companies have grown, generally they keep growing. And so then that bigger part of the index then grows more. You benefit from that growth. Uh, and then when they start to decline, they get smaller and smaller every quarter. It's like, it's a pretty elegant product. Mm, it's beautiful. For- <laughs> <laughs> and obviously like you miss some of the growth because yeah, you're as not- they grow in the quarter, they're not rebalancing all the time. Like, yeah. But you get, I mean you certainly get enough growth based on incredible amounts um and you know these companies that grow will grow for years and you'll benefit from that you know as we have from the tech giants of today but those tech giants are going to fall off they're going to be disrupted and they're going to be replaced and as that happens the new companies that come through and overtake them will become bigger parts of the indexes as they become smaller parts of the indexes and those companies may die but the index will keep grinding up i can't wait for the day that Google, Microsoft, Amazon um, are not the top companies in the S&P 500 mm. because it'll mean... I just can't wait to see what the top companies yeah. are. You know what I mean? There will, be a, there will be a big period of stagnation there though. That's what you've yeah. got to know because they're so much bigger now. Yeah. For the other companies to catch up, there'll be a few years of... Yeah. 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 So there's no better example than what Ren has just explained uh, by looking at IBM, General Electric, GE and Apple. So IBM was the biggest American company in 1980. GE was then the biggest American company in 2000. And Apple was the biggest American company in 2020. So over a period of about 40 years, we've seen three companies rotate through driving the index, as Ren was saying, but uh, you know, at periods then falling away. Yeah. And if you had tried to stock pick and invested in those big companies, you would have lost money. Like I think from... GE was number one in 2000 to now it's down about 80%. Yeah. Um, but in that time, the index has just kept getting stronger and stronger. G- the biggest company has fallen away, but that hasn't slowed the index down because other companies have come through and taken it over. Mm. Same way in the 80s. Like the saying in the 80s, no one gets fired buying IBM. The IBM went back to back in the Nobel Prizes. <laughs> they won like Nobel Prize for physics two years in a row. Like they couldn't be touched they were incredible if you were an individual stock picker in the 1980s you had ibm in your portfolio yeah but just as it happens time and time again individual companies die even the biggest of powerhouses the most financially stable and cutting edge technology they die that's just the nature of it Mm. and ibm fell away not as dramatically as ge but by 2000 it was number 11 in the index by 2020 it was number 53 in the index Mm. So the index powered on, driven by new companies, um, Apple being the biggest symbol of that. And that, I think, is just an important reminder when you're building your portfolio, when you're thinking about core exposure. Core, yeah. Like that is why indexes are so powerful. That's mm. why they are so hard for active managers to beat and for retail investors like us to beat. Mm. It's just a reminder that companies die, indexes are forever. Built- hey. Build your portfolio accordingly. Indexes, you can put in a bottom drawer. Companies, you've got to keep checking on. Absolutely. And here's to IPOing so we can get the tat. Companies, (laughs) indexes are forever.